For this video, I'd like to continue the discussion about the average rate of change, but this time focusing specifically on graphs and tables. So remember from the previous video where I introduced this topic that average rate of change, we're essentially going to be given two points. We can call it x1 and y1 and x2 and y2. And we'll be able to plot these points somewhere on the graph and then we'll connect them with a straight line. So the average rate of change will then just be the slope of that line. So let me write that down. So the average rate of change of whatever this function is, is just going to be equal, equal to the slope of the line between the two points. And there are a couple different ways to write the formula. So let me say we have the slope. And slope is essentially defined as the change in the y values divided by the change in the x values. Remember this triangle here is just the Greek letter delta, meaning change in. And you could also think about it as how much the line rises divided by how much it runs. But this is probably a more formal way to write it. And the change in the y values can be represented as their difference, y2 minus y1. And likewise for the x values, we have x2 minus x1. But sometimes you see this in function notation. So you might see f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1, where f of x2 is really just y2 and f of x1 is really just y1. It's the function value at those specific x values. But remember, the function and the y value are the same thing. So for this particular problem, we actually have t instead of x, but it works the same way. You can just replace x1 and x2 with t1 and t2. So for this problem, we're given this interval, minus 1 to 4. And you could also write it in that inequality notation, but it essentially means that we go from an x value of minus 1 to an x value of 4. And since we have brackets, it includes the endpoints. We have these equal signs. If this was parentheses, it would just be greater than or less than without the equal sign at the bottom. But to find the average rate of change over this interval, we essentially want to look at the graph of each of these points. We want to also know their y values. So when x is negative 1, let's figure out what the y value is. And for x is negative 1, you can see the y value is down at minus 7. And for x is 4, you can see the y value is at 0. And the average rate of change over this interval, we're just going to connect these with a line. So maybe something like that. Though, again, this is not perfectly drawn, but you get a rough idea. And the average rate of change, all we want to do is find the slope of this line. Now, since we actually have a picture here, we could use the formula, but we could also just count. We could just figure out, well, how much x changed. So we can kind of drop this dashed line here and draw it over here as well. So it looks like x went from minus 1 to 4. So x went over by 5. So the change in x is 5. And the y values went from minus 7 to 0. So the y values went up 7. So our average rate of change here, I can just abbreviate average rate of change over this interval from minus 1 to 4 would be equal to that change in y divided by the change in x. But we found that to be 7 for the change in y. And for the change in x, that was 5. So 7 fifths is the slope of this line, but it's also the average rate of change. And the way to interpret this is that we're essentially every time we go over by 5, we're going to go up 7 units on average. And it's not perfect because it only generally describes what's going on. It doesn't really tell us much what's going on between the two points. It only tells us roughly that the function's going upward, and on average, every time you go over 5, you go up 7. But you can see between minus 1 and 1, it goes up very steeply, it peaks, and then it actually goes downward for a while, where it reaches this corner and then turns upward and starts going up again. 
So this doesn't tell us all that. It only gives us this rough idea of what's happening. And to know the exact rate of change, remember, that's where you need calculus. And that's where you essentially look at the tangent to a specific point. So you plot a point, and you can look at the tangent line to that point, and the tangent line will give you the exact rate at which the function is changing. Like, for instance, right here, it would be flat. The function's actually not changing at its peak, and then it starts going downward here. And so the tangent line would be pointing downward. And the slope of that tangent line, like I mentioned, is the exact rate of change. So for this one, you would put 7 fifths as your answer. So let's do some more. These will be roughly similar. Some are longer, some are shorter. And so this one, we're wondering which of these intervals does our function have a negative average rate of change. And for all of these, we're just going to plot the points. So remember, interval notation, this is x is always bigger than 4 and less than 6. It includes that because of brackets. So we want to plot 4 and 6. So 4 is here and 6 is here. But you can see if we connect those with a line that it's going upward. In fact, the average rate of change for that, you go over 1 and up 2. And for this one, because it is a line, that would actually be the exact rate of change over that interval. But that's kind of a special case since linear equations, these lines, are with constant rate of change. So when we take their average, it is actually equal to the exact value, just because for lines, that rate of change does not change. But this is not negative. This is positive. So we can eliminate that. Let me actually make some space. And for this one, we're dealing with a left bound of negative 1 and a right bound of 6. So we can plot at negative 1. That's right here. And again, there's 6. And we could connect them with a line if we wanted to. Something like that, though maybe not exactly. But since the line has a positive slope, we know this is not going to have a negative average rate of change. So we can eliminate that one as well. Now this one goes from negative 6 to negative 4. So we can plot at negative 6 and at negative 4. But this one is going downward. So this one does have a negative average rate of change. Because you can see as x goes over, y goes down, or the function goes down. And if you wanted, you can calculate the exact average rate of change, but we just want to know which one is negative, and this one is downward sloping, while the rest are positive. But let's check the last one, just to be certain. So this is when x is minus 4, and x is 6. So we go from minus 4 to 6. But when we draw on that graph, it looks something like that. But that's a positive sloping line, since as x increases, the y value increases as well. So choice C is definitely the right answer here.